Hi, I'm Dave Vickers and welcome to The Photo Show. In today's episode, we're going to have a go at macro photography. Now before I start this, there's a couple of things I need to say. We are currently on lockdown in London, so the ability to go out and about and do anything different is very limited. I do have a back garden and I was trying to think of things to go and do that just involved using the area that I have at the moment at my disposal. Now with photography, there are so many different types of photography and you never really get to try them all. And one of the things I've never really tried is macro photography. Now, macro photography is taking photos of things that are very small and it normally involves things like insects or water drops or flower petals, things like that, to get a really detailed image of a very small object. Now, if you're doing macro photography seriously, you'll have specialized macro lenses and be set up and used to doing it. I have none of these things. I have an old Nikon 70 to 35 mm lens, which has a macro setting on it. It's not a dedicated macro lens, but I thought I'd give that a try out. Now, what I thought I'd do to make this interesting, one, it's new to me, so I'm not expecting great results. Two, I wanted to make it as accessible to everyone as possible. So I'm going to use an old Nikon lens that I have that has some semblance of a macro setting. It's not a proper macro lens, but it has a macro setting on it. I'm going to use a Panasonic bridge camera and I'm going to use a mobile phone. And I'm just going to have a go at macro photography using each of those three things and see what gives the best results. It's basically, if you're looking for something to do, this is an idea that you can do in the open spaces you have near you. Just go out, see what you can take, and we'll let you know what worked best. An old Nikon lens, a bridge camera, or a mobile phone. Which of those worked best for macro photography? So let's go out in the garden and see what we can find. Now, even though it's springtime, there's not masses of flowers and insects around. I thought, hopefully, I'd find a lot more. But what I have managed to find is a ladybird. Or if you're in the US, I think you call them ladybugs. Exactly the same thing, little red beetle with spots on. So let's see what kind of photo we can get of the ladybird by using the Nikon with the macro setting lens. As you can see, the quality of the image is okay. I can't really get close enough. The focal distance on the lens is not allowing me to get close enough in and focus to get that really large scale image of this tiny little bug. Okay, let's see what it goes like using the Panasonic bridge camera. Now this actually has a macro setting. It has a macro autofocus setting, so I'm gonna put the camera on that and that's what I'm gonna use. So let's try photographing the ladybird with the Panasonic. This is a lot better. I'm finding I can get a lot closer and get a lot larger image of the tiny little ladybird. Trouble is, is trying to chase it around the leaf, but I'm doing the best I can. One of the issues I am finding is where I'm in bright sunlight is not having the shadow of the camera falling on the subject. I'm having to move around so that I'm not casting a shadow over the subject and I'm getting enough light on it. But as you can see, we are getting a lot better results with the Panasonic bridge camera than I did with the Nikon macro lens. Lastly, let's try exactly the same subject but this time, which is with a mobile phone. There's no particular settings, there's no macro settings, I'm just using it on completely auto. So let's see how close the mobile phone will get in and let us focus on the ladybird. Actually, surprisingly enough, I would say so far, the mobile phone for ease of use and being able to get in close and focus is winning over the two other cameras. Next, I'm gonna try exactly the same thing, but using the blossom that's on this tree. And once again, the Nikon's given a nice quality result, but I'm not really able to get close enough in to get that really close up detail. Okay, let's move on and see how we do with the Panasonic bridge camera. Now you can see the Panasonic bridge camera, again, on its macro setting, is letting us get much closer in, much sharper focus, and much better detail. Moving on, let's see how we do with the mobile phone. As I said, once again, no particular settings, the mobile phone is completely on auto. I'm just gonna see how close it will let me get in to take a photograph of the flowers and the blossoms on this tree. And it's showing again, the mobile phone is doing a really good job. If this is something you just want to try and you don't wanna spend out on expensive equipment, if you're just looking for something to do and you're bored, the mobile phone is doing a fantastic job here of getting really close up images of each of these things. Lastly in the garden, I've got a patch of lilies. The flowers aren't out yet, but I have noticed that when it rains that the leaves have really nice water droplets on it. So if I spray a bit of water onto the leaves, that should then give us some nice water droplets. And we can try the same again with all three cameras, this time photographing the water droplets. And 
And once again, we're getting pretty much the same results here. The Nikon is giving really nice quality images, but the lens I've got just isn't a proper macro lens, and it's not allowing me to get close enough to the subject to get it really large in the viewfinder. The Panasonic is still doing a fantastic job. The macro setting is allowing me to get in nice and close and focus on the water drops. Again, the only problem I'm having is not casting a shadow from the camera over the subject I'm trying to photograph. And lastly, let's try our favorite so far, the mobile phone. And once again, it's giving us perfectly usable images. If what you want to do is just try this for fun, just take your mobile phone out in the garden, find something to photograph, it's allowing you to get in really close and focus in some quite good detail on all these tiny, tiny subjects. As I was saying, this was never going to be a tutorial on macro photography. It's not something I've tried before and I don't have the proper equipment. There are plenty of brilliant videos on YouTube on macro photography. This isn't one of them. <laughs> This was just something to give you an idea of something that you could go out and do in your own garden, in your own backyard. If you're bored and you like photography and you want to try something new, if you've got a camera with a macro setting, go out, give it a try, see what you can find and get some really nice close-up photos. If all you've got is a mobile phone, that's giving some really good results. So there you go, that was just a bit of fun. It wasn't a tutorial, I'm not claiming to be a macro photographer. Um, this was a bit of fun. The images are okay at best. Let me know in the comments below how you got on. I'd love to know the kind of things you find in your gardens and backyards and get to photograph. For now, I'm Dave Vickers. This is The Photo Show. Please stay safe and well. Until next time, see you then.